Good morning, good afternoon. Um, this is the EFI Pro 16H. This is a uh, entry level uh, all LED cool cure hybrid printer. What you're looking at here is a 65 inch receivable bed with a 64 inch print area. You can print full bleed anywhere within that 64 inches. True hybrid functionality makes that um, the vacuum table hold the material down with a belt to drive the material through the print surface. The vacuum table is des uh, designated into four individually controlled chambers. They are easily controlled by four ball valve um, handles on the right hand side of the press. You'll see real quick that right behind this door right here, easily to get into. There's the four blue handles. Like I mentioned, the chambers on the table are individually controlled. Chamber four, all the way to the left of the bed, three, two, and one. So if you are running a smaller sheet of material and you're only in zone one, you can actually turn these ball valves here and run just zone one. What that's gonna do is not just shut off these areas, but it's gonna take all of the suction um, from these three areas and focus it to the area of the bed that you are using. So you do have control over that again for um, small pieces of material that you might be running. And then also if you're running really thin film, um, such as a Lintec or a window cling, you might wanna bring down some of that suction so you don't get any artifact from the belt on your prints. Also over here, you'll see um, that we have a new pro server that's driving the printer, driving Fiery XF. Uh, previous models were as it was a standard desktop computer. So now we have the um, high production and a and lot, uh, lot of additional storage available to you utilizing the um, EFI Pro Server for your Fiery XF drive. Also over here you'll see that we're now driving the printer with a PLC as opposed to a traditional uh, USB communication um, in, that we were using in previous models. This is going to allow you to process more jobs faster. Also included in the uh, Pro 16H um, are color tools. So when we get into Fiery XF, we'll talk about um, the abilities for color matching and um, again, it comes standard with the Pro 16H. So you'll get the uh, ES2000 spectrophotometer with the color um, options. So over here, we have the carriage. You'll see the name of the game for this printer is ease of use and ease of access. Um, there is just one door that slides on and off to gain access to the carriage. So you can see it slides on, slides it right off. There's no nuts and bolts or screws or anything like that. So what you're looking at here is we have a standard four color printer. You have CMYK heads in the center, one white jet on either side. It's going to allow you to do white over as well as white under. They are the Rico Gen 5 print heads. Um, it's a high native resolution, native resolution print head um, utilizing four levels of grayscale with a ultra drop um, size of seven liter. So you're really getting really good high quality um, at a really good speed. Again, ease of use, ease of access. You can see that you have um, these main pur purge chambers here. What that's gonna allow you to do is if you or your operator uh, potentially ran your ink bottles too low and you think you might have some air in your lines, you're able to attach this tool very quickly. Open up that valve and hit purge. You can see that little bubble that just came out. And now that I have a nice steady stream, I know I don't have any air in my system. So quick, easy access, open and close for any sort of serviceable things that you might need. All of your plumbing and your print boards, your secondary tanks here. If there is any need for any flushing or anything like that, again, you have a, a quick release here and you can attach your little flush right here and flush your jets. You'll see that it purged into this main trough right there. You can also do um, a manual purge of your CMYK and your white right here in the front. It's gonna purge into a secondary waste tank in the back. I'll go ahead and show you what a purge looks like. So you'll see that that trough just rose up to the surface of the jets. There's a very small of ink being purged out of your heads. You can hear that vacuum that kicked on. There's a small air knife over here that's actually suctioning off any of the excess ink that was purged so that you don't actually have to get your hands dirty to clean their jets.
what you're looking at here is the main catch basin for any uh, purging that you're doing. You'll see that there's a small hole in uh, the back left corner. That's where all of your uh, main ink is going to drain. And again, if you do any um, bleeding of your lines, it's going to purge here. This here is the air knife that rose to, rose to the surface and um, suctioned off your excess ink. You're going to want to keep that clean as part of your daily maintenance. Just wipe it down as needed because it does come in close contact with your jets. Also on the carriage, um, you'll see the leading and trailing um, sides. This is leading, this is trailing. We have the first of two wrinkle detect systems. What that's going to do is if you have a buckle in your material, uh, maybe you, your roll was running skewed for some reason or um, you're running a piece of plywood that maybe has some frayed edges or something like that, it will come into contact with the material before it causes any damage to your lamps or to your jets. It will act like an e-stop, but it will spare you any damage to your uh, carriage. Next, we have the LED Cool Cure lamps. Uh, they run at about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. They're rated for um, upwards of 10,000 working hours. I say working hours because once we start printing, you'll see that the lamps are only on when they're curing the ink that's making you money. They are no longer consumable for this product line, so you don't have to worry about um, you know, the incurring the extra cost of replacing lamps or the downtime of lamp replacement. Um, it's no longer consumable. As far as maintenance goes, you're going to want to keep these filters nice and clean, and you're going to want to keep the glass in front of the lamps clean as well to make sure you're getting a proper cure. Next in line, we have the first of two static ionization bars. They're designed to help mitigate some of the surface static that can get built up during maybe the drier winter months, or maybe you're doing a lot of polystyrene printing. Um, with that, you end up getting some surface static depending on the environment, and um, some of your dots can go away, leading to poorer image quality. So this is going to help control the placement of those dots by mitigating surface static. Uh, as I mentioned, we have your CMYK with your two channels of white on the outside. Your print heads are in a, um, a straight align. They are aligned uh, straight across the, the jet plate. Next, we have the ink delivery system. The ink delivery system mar uh, mirrors the carriage. So you have your CMYK in the center, and then you have your two channels of white on either side. Talking about ease of use, ease of access, you can see you have your filters, your first and last filters, your pump filter, and all of your pumps very, very close, um, easy access if you do need to get in there and do any sort of servicing. Your CMYK is going to have a feed, a return, and a float to report levels. Your white is going to have a feed of return as well as a circulation, recirculation, um, knowing that white is uh, a little bit more of a viscose ink with a bit more pigment. Um, it is recirculated up to the jet plate so that uh, nothing gets settled in the plumbing, nothing gets settled in the lines. We do recommend that you do, when you're doing your CMYK purge, that you do purge your white with it just so that you're exercising those jets regularly. As far as changing out ink bottles, if you do have one bottle that's running low, you can put over here on the door, hang on to it until you've used some of, the bottle, uh, some of the ink in the full bottle, and you can pour the remaining ink in the removed bottle into the new bottle, eliminating any waste of ink. On the back, we have the waste tank. Um, you can see that it is a very small bottle. On the right-hand side is your main waste. Any ink purged into that trough that we viewed at the front of the printer is going to go directly to this waste tank here on the right. On the left is the waste ink from the air knife when it suctioned off um, the purged excess ink. At the end of every week, um, every work week, there's going there's a liquid separator button at the front of the press that you're going to want to engage. What that's going to do is turn on that small pump that you see next to the secondary waste tank. It's going to pump the ink from the left hand um, waste tank to the main waste tank. There is ink reporting back to the software, ink level reporting. So you'll get a readout on your waste bottle as well as your ink bottles um, as percentages remaining in the bottle. All right. Going back around to the 
front of the press. You'll see that every Pro 16H comes with two tables, one for the front and one for the rear. These tables are on wheels and easily mobile, and if you're not using them, there is a handle down here that you can unlatch, stand the tables up, um, and put them away, um, up against the wall, out of the way. They're also designed to be daisy chained, so you can see that they're easy on and easy off on these pins. If you needed to attach a secondary one, you could use this same clamp, clamp on a secondary table and attach it to the one pin back here. So when you're running a rigid substrate, you're going to go ahead and put your table on. And you'll see that there are uh, roller bars on the surface of the table. If you're running something heavy, such as a piece of glass or plywood, it'll help you move that material across the surface of the table without um, any sort of static, I mean, sorry, any sort of uh, added weight from friction. So to set up for a sheet, you can see that there is one button here for the fence. Engage that button and that fence drop down against the back. You can see that there's a small ruler on there. All you're going to do is push your material up against that fence and against the side block. If you're running multiple boards up, multiple sheets up, you're going to also push it up against that fence. And then there's numbers on the ruler that you can align and say if you needed one inch between your sheets. My first sheet started at 24. I'm going to start my next sheet at 25. There are also additional blocks that you can use um, as additional stoppers. So if you are going to be running the same size sheet multiple up um, several times, you won't have to worry about reading the ruler. You can use additional blocks. The vacuum table is activated with a foot pedal. It's on and off from the front and the back. So there's two pedals for you to choose from. You can also activate it within the software. All right, so there are two pieces of different software that you're going to utilize to drive the Pro 16H. The first bit that you're looking at now is called the EFI Print Control Utility. This is going to be all of the communication with the printer. So when you come over here under the settings, you'll see that you have your gap. What that's going to do is automatically set the carriage height to the proper 1.5 millimeters over the surface of your material. It is not a manual feature. It's something that the software will take care of. In this area here, you have control of the belt. You're going to move the belt forward or backwards, as well as the carriage left and right. And you do have the ability to enable the fence um, from the software as well as from the rear of the printer. Over here on the upper right-hand side, you see that you have your, some of the controls over your LED cool cure lamps. And then in this area here, you have your margins. And then this is going to be where you tell the software and the printer if you're using a rigid or rolled substrate. If you're running a rolled substrate, right here we have an audio, auto media scan. What that's going to do is it's going to drive the carriage over the full width of the bed. There's a small laser in the back right-hand corner of the carriage that's going to scan the bed for any material. At that point, it's going to tell the software how wide the material is, as well as locate the right edge, so that your zero, zero point starts at the right edge of the scanned material. What this does is it eliminates any need to um, put the, the rolled substrate in a specific spot or do any measurements. You can just throw it on into the print zone and start printing right away. So the first thing to do here is we're running a sheeted material or rigid media. So we're going to select rigid. And then we're going to go ahead and select set gap. Once I select set gap, in the video you'll notice, you'll see that the carriage is going to raise to its highest location. There's a small pneumatic pin that will engage in the back right hand corner. The carriage, once at its highest spot, it's going to drive over to the surface of the material and then lower. Once that pin engages with the surface of your material, the carriage will stop lowering and the gap between your jets and the surface of your print will be at the suggested 1.5 millimeters.
with the gap set, you can then import your next file. So you can see here that my margins, if you go back to the software, I'll set my margins here to zero. I'm on a rigid substate. We've already set our gap. So I can import my image. It'll give you a small preview of your image that's going to be printed here. In this area, you see that it's giving me my output resolution. It was ripped at 600 by 600. This is going to be a four pass mode, CMYK only. And it's going to tell me the uh, size of my image. Also, a really great feature for the Pro 16H is that it's going to automatically give you your ink usage. It's not something that you have to print ahead of time. Once you import your file into the print control utility, it's going to tell you how much ink is being used for that image in the mode that it was ripped at, saving you the time of having to print something in order to quote jobs. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit print. And in the video feed, you'll see that the belt is going to move the material into the print zone. And then the carriage is going to travel over to the surface of the belt and then start printing. So as previously mentioned, 10,000 working hours on these lamps. You'll see that the lamps are only on when they're curing the printed ink and then they turn off. You'll also notice that the carriage is not traveling the full width of the beam. It's only going to travel over the area that needs to be printed. And again, once the lamps touch the ink, it's completely dry to the touch. Once this print comes off the printer, you'll be able to put it in a box and ship to your customers. This current mode here is a four pass mode. This is considered to be production at 311 square feet per hour. And although in a higher speed production mode, you can see that this is a very nice color dense, high quality image. Again, printed at 311 square feet per hour in a four pass mode. So that was printing to a rigid. We're going to go ahead and change over to a rolled substrate so you can see what that looks like. First thing I'm going to do is turn off my vacuum come around to the rear of the printer and remove my cable. Again, just undo the clamps, slide it back out of the way. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can run rolled materials on the EFI Pro 16H. This is your main media bar. Down here on the lower side of the uh, unwind side, we have the dancer bar. We also have this chuck system here. So Quickly, if you're going to be running um, a longer production run of a rolled substrate, you're going to want to engage the chuck system. It's going to lock your core in place. And then what you would do is come under your dancer bar. Over the deviation bar. And onto the belt. This is a gravity 
media bar. It's just going to hold, help hold your material in place as well as um, prevent any wrinkles that might have occurred um, in the loading process from reaching into the print zone so you don't have a carriage strike. With this, utilizing the chucks and the dancer bar, you're going to engage the motor here. There are two modes. There's auto and manual. When you're in auto mode, as the material gets pulled through the belt, I mean through the print zone, sorry, the dancer bar is going to raise because of the tension of the material. Once that dancer bar gets to the sensor, it's going to tell the motor to automatically feed more material into the print zone. If you're running in manual, it's going to um, allow the printer or the belt to pull the material through the system. This is absolutely how you're going to want to do it if you're running longer production runs. You want to be in control of the location of the material. If you're just doing some sheets or quick banners that you'll then be sheeting in the front of the uh, press, you don't have to engage the core or the dancer. You can just have the belt pull the material from the main winder into the print zone. And then you're going to go ahead and engage your vacuum. And that is it on the printer. We'll go into the software. So one of the key features of running roll to roll rook on a hybrid is as you can see, I did not have to do any measurements for location of um, the unwind roll to the take up roll. You'll notice that I have not attached to a take up roll in the front. Running roll to roll work on a true hybrid platform such as the EFI Pro 16H, you're able to get your rolled substrate into the print zone do a media scan and a set gap and start printing right away. With the pause feature enabled in the EFI print control utility, once you've printed enough substrate to attach to your take-up winder, you can pause, attach to your take-up winder, and then resume. What this means is that with every roll-to-roll -roll job that you're running on a hybrid, you're saving three to five feet of material at the front of your roll as well as at the end of your roll because you're able to print immediately once you get into the print zone. So within the software in Print Control Utility, you're going to go ahead and get into your preferences. So within Print Control Utility, you're going to open up your settings again. You're going to make a quick change over to Roll Media. You're going to set your gap because this is clearly a, a much thinner substrate than the previously printed 8 inch expanded PDC. All right, so within Print Control Utility, you've selected set gap. You'll see that the carriage is going to raise to its highest available point. The small pneumatic pin, just like when you're running your rigid, is going to engage. The carriage is going to drive over the, the surface of the material. And then it's going to lower until that pin engages the surface of the material. And at that point, it will be at 1.5 millimeters away from the surface. The next step in the software, so you're going to come over here to this area here, and you're going to select a media scan. What the media scan is going to do, there's a small laser in the back right-hand corner of the carriage. That carriage, you'll see, is going to drive over the surface of the material. It's going to locate the right edge of that material, changing your zero, zero margins from the fence to the location of the material on the bed. So again, you're not spending a lot of time measuring the location of your rolled substrates when you're loading. You can throw it up on the bed arbitrarily, and the media scan feature is going to locate that material. And as you can see in the software, it's going to tell you how wide that material is. And if you watch this area here, you'll see this right edge button, uh, right edge margin is going to change. So our material width is 54.04. We'll say OK. And then this, you'll see, changed from 0.035 to the 3 inches, um, that is the location of this right edge here. All right, after you've set the gap, the next thing you're going to do is do your media scan. What this is, is there's a small laser in the back right-hand corner of the carriage. 
carriage is going to drive over the full width of the bed. That laser is not only going to locate this right edge here, so that now all, your zero point is this right edge, but it's also going to tell the software how wide your substrate is. So when you're loading your roll-to-roll -roll substrate, there's no need to take any measurements or load it in an exact location. You can throw it on the media bar, get it up into the print zone, and with the set gap, auto set gap and the media scan feature, you're able to start printing pre very quickly. You can see that it's 54 inches, and my right edge margin was automatically changed. And with that, you're able to start running another print. So I'll go ahead and see, we'll change the margins in the software so that it will center our image. So all you have to do is put in your margin here. You'll see that I have my media width and my right edge. So I'll print the same image so you can see the consistency. Media changeover, going from a roll to a rigid if the material is um, staged and available, should take um, about a minute or, or less, depending on um, operator skill level. But you can see there's not a lot of downtime incurred with the media changeover. So this is going to be that same image, uh, 311 square feet per hour, but this time printed to a rolled vinyl. All right, and that is one print on a rolled substrate. Next, we'll talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll talk about Fiery XF. That is the other software that will drive the EFI Pro 16H. So what you're looking at here, Fiery uh, workflow um, in this setup, you have your workflows over here on the left-hand side. So that'll be uh, different automated workflows that you can customize and set up um, based on uh, operator, based on customer, based on material size. Um, you can completely customize anything within these workflows. The benefit to that is once you import into those workflows, there's no clicking that has to happen. So you can, if you have um, a material that requires the images every time they get brought in need to be scaled 50%, rotated 90, and then mirrored for second side printing. Um, you can have automation set up in Fiery XF so that you don't actually have to physically do any of that clicking. So those are your workflows. Down here is your job list. So this will be a running queue of any jobs that have been imported for production. Up top you'll see a preview of um, any of the jobs that you have imported, so you can have a visual on what you're working on. Up here at the top of the screen, you'll see that there are some um, imposition 
settings that are available to you. You can apply your margins here. So if we needed a 15 inch margin like we did on that previous image, um, and then we wanted to bring it down an inch from the top, you can apply your margins here. If we needed to scale this for whatever reason, it needed to be uh, 18 inches wide as opposed to 24, you can go ahead and shrink it down. You also have the ability to rotate and mirror within Fiery XF. So depending on how robust um, or not your graphic department, department is, you could put some of the control over these images and material handling um, with your operator. Over here, um, this is the area within Fiery XF that you're going to apply any of um, your additional needs for the printer. So under the Layout tab, you can set up custom sheet sizes. Again, if your customer um, has a pretty specific size, say it's 14 by 18, you can see that my workspace now is 14 by 8. So we can adjust our image then to fit within that specified area. If we were running 4 by 8 boards that were then going to be um, cut down afterwards, offline, we can have a 48 by 96. So now I know that this is my working area um, for the sheet that's going to be printed. What you can also do within here is um, another location for your margins and your scaling and your rotating. If you were going to be nesting, you can just select multiple jobs at once, right click and apply new nesting. What that's going to do is you'll see that it's going to put the jobs all together in one, uh, one new output. So if again our sheet size was the 48 by 96. We can select all of these images and apply any margins that we need to here. And then if we had any space that we needed to put in between, you could put them here. Uh, we also have the option within Fiery XF to do step and repeat. So if you select this arrow here, you can apply, say you need five copies, hit apply. It'll give you the best layout for five copies. If you wanted to fill your material, or if you knew again, that your sheet, your sheet size was 48 by 96, you can specify how many you want printed um, based in columns and rows. So you apply your number based on columns and rows, hit apply, and it will automatically lay it out for you. And again, you have control over your margins here. If you're going to be doing a large banner job, you do have the option for tiling. So if this is my nesting, but it's also going to be, it needs to be tiled for application on a wall. You can set up your custom tile size. If our material, say, was only 48 inches wide, and we need a one inch overlap on the right side for the tape. We hit apply, and you'll see that it's going to turn this one image into, or sorry, this layout into a tile for installation. Next we have finishing. So built in to Fiery XF, like we talked about, um, some of the upgrades from previous models uh, included with the Pro 16H, you get this cut feature. What this is going to allow you to do is to come in and select from a number of different cut drivers. For example, possibly this. And you'll see if I zoom in that it applied the small black circles that a zone cutter uh, camera would need to register for cut pass. What you can also do is if you have a contour cut, um, your pre-press department uh, wanted to cut just maybe around your glasses if there was a contour cut associated, 
with the proper naming of a spot color, you could extract that uh, contour cut data, and Fiery XF will output to a path of your choice. Next, we have um, color. Again, we talked about the ability um, now with the Pro 16H for the advanced color options. So you can come and you can set up custom spot color libraries. You can set up custom um, media profiles based on um, a percentage of, of ink being reported out. So if you have a darker substrate that's going to require a bit more ink to cover, you could profile for that material allowing less ink limiting, letting more ink get to the surface. Whereas if you're running on something maybe that's a bit more porous, maybe a card stock, you would consider limiting the ink a little bit more. So you have full control over all of that with your color management upgrade. There are some on-the-fly adjustments available to you. You can correct to increase or decrease CMYK values, as well as increase or decrease brightness, contrast, and saturation. However, these are one-time adjustments. They're not able to be saved. Under the output tab, um, again, right now, all of the standard workflows that come um, with any new purchase of an EFI Pro 16H, workflows are going to automatically be associated with the appropriate um, calibration profile for the material. Um, if you are doing custom profiles, as mentioned previously, this would be where you would go out and select which profile you want to use for that mode. Lastly, we have color verifier. What this is going to allow you to do is if you have a file with a um, spot color built in that you need to match to, you're able to um, print a control strip that will extract any of of these spot colors within an image and print a small swatch at the bottom of the image um, for the spectral photometer to scale post uh, to scan post print. So it'll look at the suggested lab values from Pantone when you print and get a read using the EFI um, spectral photometer. You'll read in the lab values that the printer is outputting and can automatically optimize um, the print that you're doing for a new spot color. Once you have the job as you want it, you simply click Save and Print, and it will output a BCO file that you'll use to import Print Control Utility to start your print. That has been a presentation of the EFI Pro 16H, recently awarded Product of the Year by the SGIA Awards panel.